Wolf and Wolfing. Wolf and Wolfing. Ooh. I'ma let them have it. I don't know about you, but I don't run from action. action. I'm up with gun clapping. Gotta be from gun clapping. I'm up with gun clapping. Gotta be from gun clapping. Really, the media tell us if somebody try to fight you, fight them back. Shooting's okay, fighting's okay. 99 to 90, six seconds remaining. Like people say, walk away from fights or arguments, that don't exist to me. Because doesn't nobody do that. That's how people around here is. If you walk away, you a punk, you a sissy. My community is usually violent, so I see them fist fighting, shootings. Nobody's stopping it. They're just letting it keep going on. Nobody's saying this needs to be stopped or not enough people. I was in uh, eighth grade. I was on my way to school when these dudes stopped me. They asked me what, what was I. I told them I was nothing, but they didn't believe me. So I kept on trying to walk. They wouldn't let me walk. They wanted to fight. I didn't want to fight, but I had no choice. So I turned my head slightly. I noticed somebody that I knew. I'm looking for him for help, but he didn't help me. After we got done fighting, he finally came up to me. It was like, oh, he all good. And I was like, you couldn't say that before. You would rather sit here and watch me fight than stop it. This all started in my sophomore year, and me and my best friend went to the same school. We did that on purpose. But it all changed suddenly when um, she was afraid of the intimidating crowd, the popular kids. They told her, like, if you don't want to be friends with us, then we're going to beat you up too. My parents' solution was for me to uh, attend a different school, but the school that I attended is two blocks from my house, so I see the same people every day, and we all live in the same neighborhood, so it's not solving anything. Stories like this are common in our neighborhood. Every day is a test. You never get to rest. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop when you get to school. When I was walking in my classroom, the police officer told me to go to my classroom, and I told him I'm going, and he grabbed me. I said, like, man, let me go. And he didn't let me go, so he took me to the police room. Another police officer came in, and we was basically just fighting. The principal walked in, and he said he was gonna expel me, and they charged me as a delinquent child for Indiana, and I couldn't go to school. No more schools in Indiana, and they tried to expand me to 2012. Existing in a society that we exist in that really focuses a lot on punishment, on discipline, on revenge, does not get to the core of the issues that we deal with person to person as individuals. And so restorative justice is one of those concepts of theories that helps us to reevaluate the conflicts that we engage in. Thought of Justice is a way that two or more people come up with a solution to a conflict that heals both sides. Restorative justice is different from other kinds of justice that are more punitive because it really takes into consideration all the people that were affected by a specific incident. Instead of just punishing someone, it helps to be able to create a safe space where that person can talk about what happened and the people that were harmed or affected can talk about what happened. We as a society don't create space for people to heal and for relationships to build and develop and that relationships aren't something that happen once. You don't have a relationship with a person and then it's just over. And that's what restorative justice is about. And that's what we're learning in community builders. There's a problem in our communities. The way we are handling conflict is not working. For example, two years ago, I was shot in my back. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. The person started shooting at everybody who was around. And everybody started running. Every time I leave out of the house, go anywhere, I gotta watch my back, make sure I'm safe because anything could happen. That could happen again. This summer, as a community builder youth leader, we learned four techniques that helps heal the problem within the community. Pure mediation, pure juries, restorative chat, and peace circles. Using peace circles, for example, through dialogue, you get a chance to hear all sides of the story in order to come up with a solution that helps all sides. In this conversation of the peace circle and 
everyone having an opportunity to, opportunity to explain themselves, I might get a chance to say, well, before Larry, I offended you. Dude, you don't remember that you offended me. Peer juries are used in schools today because they help students better their self and make them feel comfortable. Instead of teachers being involved, students are involved to help find other ways to solve consequences. Restorative chat is all about communication and dialogue. Me and my peers helped each other understand why it actually works. The whole point, the goal of a restorative chat is to help someone. You're having a conversation to help them. Peer mediation is when three people join together to resolve a conflict. But it hasn't just been about learning techniques to resolve a conflict. We're changing. We're learning the benefits of restorative justice and the underlying values and how we can use it in our daily lives. CB has given us the skills of forget and forgive and just be peaceful. Before this program, I used to get irritated really fast, like a lot. But now I've learned to like be patient, not to let everything get to me. You know, there's a mix of messages going on through the media. If the negatives, they try to show it as positive, it, it tricks you. I feel more stronger. I feel more mature. I feel more educated. We are on our way to put posters up in people's stores to let them know about restorative justice. Our marketing campaign was Hear Me Out Before You Shout. So basically, like, we're trying to get everyone to listen to other people's story or whatever they have to say before they shout. This poster is talking about think about why, think about who. It's all about compassion. What should we do? It's good to see them out doing something worthwhile. They got something to do and something in their mind so it keeps them off the streets and out of trouble. Okay, I'm so excited, so, yeah. Oh, I like this one. Put this one and that one up. We'll take a positive feedback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got that, got that. The message we're trying to portray um, is very positive. Um, hopefully they will get our message and understand that we're trying to come together to do better in our community. I'm proud of us. We just out here in the community. Oh my God. He said, give it for me. All of uh -uh. Today went great. We got to hang up our posters in a couple stores like McDonald's, the corner store. We believe the media has the power to reshape our way of thinking. With our marketing campaign, we create images and slogans to promote or serve the value. And these posters will be put up around the city of Chicago in schools and parks. Our message is to be heard so the people of the community can learn how to resolve conflict peacefully.